Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today I'm going to be doing the page to screen tag. The one, two, three. So there are already a few page to screen slash book to film kind of tags here on booktube but I haven't seen anything quite like this and so I'm calling this my original tag but I know you might come across something of a similar name or a similar idea elsewhere but basically what I want to discuss today is movie adaptations of books. The most popular other tag I've seen here on booktube is the book to film tag which kind of discusses books that you want to see made into movies but for the page to screen tag I'm going to be discussing movies that have already been made about books. I have a list of questions on my phone that are related to movie adaptations and I'm going to be answering them for you. I will also leave the questions down below in the description if you would like to do this tag yourself. Of course anybody else that wants to do this tag is totally welcome and I would love to see this become a thing here on booktube. So with that being said, let's get into the questions. Question 1. In your opinion, what is the best overall movie adaptation? For me, this has to be Catching Fire. Honestly, I thought they did such a good job. They followed the book as close as really can be done in a movie setting and it was action packed, it was visually beautiful, the soundtrack was perfect. There's honestly nothing bad that I can say about the Catching Fire movie adaptation. I enjoyed it as much as I liked the books and had no complaints whatsoever. Jennifer Lawrence is of course the perfect Katniss and that movie is the bomb. <laughs> Question number two. What is the worst movie adaptation? For me, that has to be Aragon. If you guys ever read The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini, Aragon is the first book in that series. They made a movie of it probably 10, maybe even 15 years ago, and it is absolutely nothing like the book. And beyond that, it's just not even a good movie. Like, I don't mind sometimes if they make movie adaptations that are different, if they're still good on their own, but honestly, there is nothing good about Aragon. Like, the acting is not great, the dialogue is weak and unrealistic, and the plot makes almost zero sense. So there's nothing about that that is redeemable, except for the fact that it has dragons, but even those are not animated all that well. I mean, it was years ago, so I can kind of forgive it a little bit for that, except that the movie was just so bad that I hate it anyway, so good try guys. Question number three. A movie adaptation that is nothing like the book but is still good. For me, this has to be either Lord of the Rings or The Mortal Instruments. In both cases, they made a lot of changes to the plot, but I actually think that it worked really well on the screen. Especially in Lord of the Rings, they added a lot more comedy and made it really enjoyable, kind of more of an action-adventure type story rather than a traditional epic, and so I really love the changes that they made there. And then for the Mortal Instruments movie, of course they made a lot of changes to the plot too, but I think it still worked and it still was an exciting exciting movie. Obviously as someone that read the book first I noticed all of those things but it didn't really take away from the viewing experience because I thought overall it was visually really appealing, the soundtrack was good, and the acting and chemistry of the actors was also really good. The one thing that annoyed me though was the color of Clary's hair. I have seen Lily Collins with kind of a more carroty color so why did they not do that for this movie? <sighs> Guess it doesn't even matter because they didn't get a sequel. Question number four. The best movie interpretation of a book character. For me, this has to be Dumbledore in The Philosopher's Stone and also The Chamber of Secrets. Once they switch Dumbledores, it doesn't count anymore for me. He's far too angry. I forget the actor's name. Obviously did a good job for what he was directed to do, but I wouldn't say that he's a great representation of book Dumbledore for me. Whereas I feel like the Dumbledore that was cast for the first two movies was exactly how I imagined him, both in appearance and personality. Just his presence of gentleness, yet when he screams silence to the Great Hall, like you can just tell like he has some raw power underneath all of that tenderness and so for me he was the perfect choice. He represents Book Dumbledore almost to a T and was everything that I could have ever asked for in the movie version of that character. Question number five, the worst movie interpretation of a book character. For me this has to be Alexandra Daddario as Annabeth Chase in the Percy Jackson films. Don't even get me started on those films anyway. They're nothing like the books in general, but she was honestly one of the worst choices I think they could have picked. And that's not to say her acting was bad or anything. It's just her appearance and the way that she was directed to play the character is nothing at all like I imagined Annabeth. For me, Annabeth is quirky and a little bit weird, almost a Hermione-esque character, you know, a lot of knowledge, but not quite sure what to do with it sometimes. But I feel like the way that Alexander Daddario played it was just very like sexy and mysterious, which again, there's like nothing wrong with that, but her sass came across more as like alluring rather than like quirky confidence and the other thing was she looks nothing like the character and they tried to fix that in I think the Sea of Monsters movie but in the first one the lightning thief she had dark brown hair and did not wear the characteristic baseball cap or any of Annabeth's other clothing. Question number six the best visual interpretation of a book world. I absolutely love the way that they portrayed the world of Divergent in the Divergent films. Obviously those movies did have a lot of problems and I'm not gonna get into that on this question but just in terms of sort of visual 
whole perspective. I thought it looked exactly how I imagined it and how Veronica Roth described it. Perhaps it's easier because it was based in a real city so there was a lot to go off of, but just kind of taking the world that we know and turning it dystopian, I thought they did a really good job of that. And the Dauntless faction obviously looked incredible, as well as the clean lines of Erudite, and the other factions of course were great too. So I thought that it was just very visually appealing and represented very well what I had imagined when I was reading those books. Question 7, your favorite movie adaptation of a villain. Mine has to be Nicole Kidman as Miss Coulter in The Golden Compass. I thought she did an incredible job. She had the perfect balance between that kind of like power-hungry, narcissistic cruelty as well as sort of the vulnerability and gentleness of a mother. And so I did think that just the way that she played that character was really convincing to me and I really enjoyed it. Now, I have not read those books in a very long time. I don't even know if I read the series all the way through, so I can't really comment in that sense because I'm not as well acquainted with that world as other people might be, but just in terms of what I remember from the story, I really enjoyed her performance on screen. Question number eight, your least favorite movie adaptation of a villain. Hands down, Kate Winslet as Janine Matthews in Divergent. Again, it's nothing against her acting. I think that Kate Winslet is an absolutely amazing actress, but I just thought she was totally wrong for Janine. She didn't really stand out on screen for me and as any particular kind of villain. She seemed a bit weak, and maybe it was because she was trying to disguise her accent, but I thought a lot of her lines just fell completely flat, and I didn't really believe that she was doing all of this for the greater good, which is actually what Janine Matthews believes, and I also didn't find her very scary at all, and not that she's particularly scary because she's a middle-aged woman, but she has this kind of disturbing intelligence to me, which is almost like so hyper-rational that it's inhuman, and so I wanted to kind of see that in her movements, but she just kind of seemed like a motherly character that was a bit stern. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Question number nine, the best on-screen romantic chemistry between two book characters. Now, I don't remember the actors' names off the top of my head, but the two that played Dimitri and Rose in the Vampire Academy movie, I thought were so good. They didn't even have that many scenes together, but I just felt like the chemistry was popping, you know? <laughs> when they're training and then they're, they like fall on each other and it was just fizzling and I thought they did a very good job. Question number 10, the worst on-screen chemistry between two book characters. For me, this is Peta and Katniss in the Hunger Games films, Jennifer Lawrence and Josh Hutchinson. I love them both as actors and I liked them both as Peta and Katniss, but I thought that they had no chemistry together whatsoever, which I think is highly responsible for the reason why so many movie viewers who haven't read the books don't understand why Katniss picks Peta rather than Gale. People that read the books understand why she picks Peta even if they don't necessarily approve, but what I do find is people who have only seen the movies are completely mystified, and I think that's entirely due to the fact that they have no romantic chemistry on screen. Question number 11, your favorite movie reinvention of a book character. By reinvention, I mean that they have transformed them in some way that's different from the book. And so for me, I'm kind of cheating on this one. I'm going with a TV show instead of a movie, which is not the point of this tag, so shame on me. But Raphael in The Shadowhunters Show. I haven't read The Dark Artifices yet, and I don't know if he comes back, but at least in The Mortal Instruments, he doesn't really have a huge role. He's a regular character, but Cassandra Clare doesn't go that much into his backstory in the books themselves. And so I actually loved on the show the way that they dived into his motivations and his backstory and his sexuality, and I thought that was a really interesting dynamic and I got to know him a lot better as a character and I really enjoyed it. Question number 12, I think it's number 12, awkward if it's not, a movie soundtrack that takes the book story to a whole new level. This is, hands down for me, The Lord of the Rings. That soundtrack is the greatest soundtrack to have ever been composed. I can picture every scene clearly just when the theme song comes on because they're so specific and so beautiful, and I just think that it really took Tolkien's world to a whole new level, made it come alive in a new way that is absolutely beautiful and is completely iconic. Like, you can just hear any of the themes and you know instantly which character or which scene or which part of the movies it goes with. <laughs> Question number 13. I really hope I'm on 13 or else I'm counting all of these last ones incorrectly. A movie adaptation you were excited for but that fell completely flat for you. For me, this is Before I Fall. Now this was one of the few contemporary books I've actually read that I enjoyed. I thought it was beautiful, it made me cry, and I don't read a lot of contemporary. That's not to say contemporary is bad, I just prefer my books with a few more dragons. But I loved that book when I read it in high school and I thought it was just so beautiful. And when I saw the film, I was super excited for it, but unfortunately I just didn't think it was all that special. It wasn't a bad movie, it just didn't really like, it just fell flat, as the question says. The 
the plot was quite slow on screen, whereas in the book, maybe because we were in the character's head more, I really felt involved, whereas watching it on screen, I was just kind of sitting there a little bit bored, to be honest. Yeah, so it fell flat. Question number 14, a movie adaptation that exceeded your expectations. For me, this is Holes. This is one of my favorite books of all time, and the movie, I thought, did an absolutely incredible job of capturing the essence of the story. It followed the plot really well, the soundtrack is good, it's exceedingly well cast. It exceeded my expectations. I mean, I didn't expect it to be bad, but a lot of times movie adaptations for me are just okay, but I was genuinely really impressed and liked it as much as the book and thought that they did an amazing job of actually portraying that same story. Question number 15? 14? 17? I don't know where we're at. I didn't number my questions and now I feel like an idiot, so... Good job! An underrated movie adaptation. Now, I'm going to pick Twilight, and I know you guys are going to be going, that's not underrated, that was hugely popular. But hear me out. Personally, I think the Twilight movies are absolute garbage. That's not to say the books are garbage, but the movies are garbage. And that's not to say the actors are garbage, but the movies are garbage, okay? Now that that's out of the way. <laughs> hear me out. If you watch Twilight, not as a drama, but as a comedy, it is one of the greatest things to ever be made. <laughs> I will tell you a story about my mother who had not read the books and watched the movies believing they were comedies and not knowing that they were actually supposed to be dramas and completely fell in love with them. She was howling, like laughing so hard there were nearly tears coming out of her eyes and she does not cry ever. So I tried the same thing. I rewatched them as comedies and she is correct, they are freaking hilarious. Now I know people have done parodies of Twilight that are supposed to be satire, but if you view Twilight itself as a satire of itself, it's genius. <laughs> and in that sense, it's highly underrated. And the last question of this tag is, what is an upcoming movie adaptation that you are excited for? For me, this is The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. It comes out, I think, next month now, and so I'm planning to do a whole series reread for that, and I'm super stoked because that book made me weep like a little baby, and so I hope the movie does the same. So I'm over here editing this video, and I realized I completely forgot one of the questions, so we're just gonna sneak it in here, no big deal. Um. <laughs> So the question I forgot is an important detail the movie adaptation got completely wrong. So this has to be the color of Lily Potter's eyes in the Harry Potter films. You had one job, people, one job. The entirety of the series is people saying, Harry, you look so much like your father, except your eyes. You have your mother's eyes, okay? And Snape's whole like memory thing hinges on this too, okay? Like this is an important detail that is repeated for frequently throughout the series. And so they gave Harry blue eyes, which is like, okay, fine. If they make Lily have blue eyes, it doesn't freaking matter because it's not about the eye color, it's about the fact that they're the same. And then they made her eyes brown. I'm like, how many, you're in the UK, okay? The home of the redheads in this world. Actually, I don't know, maybe Scandinavia has them too. But the point is, you have redheads in your country. Find a redhead with blue eyes. How hard is it? And if you can't find an actress that is good enough that has red hair and blue eyes, then just edit them or give her contacts. You had one job, people. One freaking job. And I'm still furious. Seriously, like, I don't care what other details they got wrong. That one is just so easy. Like, I don't understand why you missed that. Like, ugh, it's making me angry just thinking about it. We're gonna move on. <laughs> So that concludes this tag video. Those are all the questions on my list. I hope you enjoyed watching and learning a little bit more about my movie adaptation preferences. I would love to see other people do this tag, so please do it. The questions are below, so definitely check them out. And also, I would love to hear in the comments below what your guys' answers to these questions are as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. A lot of you have been leaving me messages saying that you're not being notified when I put out videos, and so make sure you just click the little bell if you want YouTube to let you know when I put out new content. So that is all for this video. I love you all so much. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!